Hello viewers, today we are going to work on this beautiful BMW E38 and the customer complaint is that the car probably is out of time. This is because the timing chains of this car have been replaced. They have replaced them with the Chinese timing tool, which uh, as most of you that have this engine know. Uh, actually this is M62 bit 44 TU version, which came from technical update, not, not for double vans or stuff that people are thinking. And they have replaced the timing chains and they have done it with the Chinese tool. So we are suspicious about from out of time timing chains. So now I'm going to hook up the scope to the car and we're going to see is this right or wrong. I have a non good waveform for the timing and we're going to compare it and we're going to see are we out of time or not. Because right now the car is triggering all the time the fault code for camshaft sensor. And yeah, they have replaced the camshaft sensors with OEM one, with aftermarket one, does matter. The car still triggers the camshaft sensor error code. Previously it didn't have it before the timing chain service. So probably the issue is going to be the timing chains. So let's hook the scope and we're going to see what is happening. Okay, just show you the good old M62. Yeah, this car has Dynan intake system, which is pretty cool. I think this was imported from USA, if I'm not mistaken. The owner is taking care of this car pretty well. The car is in really good shape for the age, which is it. So here is the ECU underneath this cover. I have started on both here the bolts and I'm going to remove it so to gain access to the wiring of the ECU and we're going to hook up to the camshaft sensors and to the crank sensor and we're going to see the waveforms and we're going to compare it with the known good which I have. Pretty much on all the M62s, TUs, probably there are some rare ones that this is not going to be the case but 90% of the time let's say 99. You're going to have the, your camshaft sensors and the crankshaft sensor on this plug here which is the 52 pin plug and is installed in the middle of the ECU. Oops. So, let me, I don't know what, it's installed. And this, this is the plug here in the middle of the ECU after these two plugs. So this is the biggest plug I believe, 52 pins and your camshaft sensors are going to be this white, let me zoom in. So are going to be this white and yellow cable pin 19 and 20. So camshaft sensor 1 and camshaft sensor 2. And on pin 46 on the same plug is your crankshaft sensor signal. So which is on the other half of the plug. So I'm going to connect because my scope is uh, only two channel. This is my scope here. I have only two channel scope. Uh, I'm going to first check bank 1 which is uh, I believe it was on the driver side or oh no it was on, on the passenger side. And after that bank 2 which is on the driver side. Uh, yeah, this is a left hand drive. Uh, so I'm going to check first bank 1, after that bank 2 and we're going to compare it with the known good. So okay guys, I have captured the first bank, let me show you. So this is the capture which I took from the car. The red trace is the one from the crankshaft sensor and the blue one is from the camshaft sensor. So as we can see, we have two small notches after that two big, uh, yeah, let me show you. Uh, yeah, this is the two big ones, after that once again two smalls. So if we go uh, once again back to it, as you can see the small one it ends up just before the missing teeth on the crankshaft reluctor wheel and the big one is also here, just before the, re the missing teeth on the reluctor wheel. And if we go on the known good which I have captured here, as you can see the small one is just the the fall down is just where the missing teeth on the reluctor wheel is as here on the bigger one so how how far we are away from it around i don't know two toots something like that as we can see it's pretty obvious that something is wrong and this for sure is going to trigger the camshaft sensor fault code so just for showing purposes i'm going to show you on the other bank to see are we out of time on the both banks but just from seeing this for sure the car is going to need a retiming of the engine which we probably going to do uh, so just want to show you this bank now I'm going to do the same on the other bank and just going to show you how far we are away okay so the other side the other bank let's count the teeth here 
So how much we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight teeth. So this is from uh, on the car which we are working on, and let's see the known good which we have. Actually, the car is triggering fault code only for one of the banks, so it's possible that this side is right. So one. Uh, this is the known good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, here we are on time. So as I told you guys, we have issue only on one of the banks, but uh, on the other one we are in spec. So once again we have the same amount of teeth on this, uh, as we can see we have once again two smalls, two bigs, and uh, if you go on the known good, once again two smalls, two bigs, and here we have exactly once again eight teeth. So one of the banks is right in time, but the other bank is out of time. So <laughs> yeah, for sure we're going to need to open up and every time this engine. Yeah, we're not going to do it with the Chinese tool. Partly we want to do it with the Chinese tool, but most of the other job we're going to do it with some other tools. I'm going to show you. Uh, yeah, tomorrow, because it's getting late, <laughs> I'm going to open up the valve covers and uh, other stuff. And uh, we're going to see physically, mechanically, how everything looks like inside. Okay, so I have removed the valve covers. And just to show you underneath. This is where the working tool for the crankshaft is located, right here. And underneath, if I zoom in, you're going to see the time exactly in the flywheel. So right now the crankshaft is located at top dead center on cylinder number one. And now I'm going to show you on the top how it looks like. <laughs> okay, on the top. I have worked up the camshaft on the both sides, on the left and on the right cylinder head, using the box here, as we can see on this side, the both camshafts are worked, as on the other side. So the main, the important thing is done, the timing of the camshafts and the crankshaft. But the issue is the reluctor wheel of the camshaft sensors. So, um, yeah. This is the tool that I'm using. Here, yeah, this is the, let's call it Chinese one, which is working most of it, except this part of it, which is for the reluctor wheel of the camshaft sensor, for which I have bought from German Out Solution this tool, which is perfect copy to the OEM one. And let me show you. On this cylinder head, we are worked exactly in the reluctor wheel. As we saw on the scope, we were exactly on time on this cylinder head. But on the other one, if we take a closer look, we are, I don't know, it's hard to tell you how much the is, but we are off. It's not small amount actually. I guess this is the reason why this car is getting the camshaft sensor pots. Because of this reluctor wheel, on, uh, this is bank 2 actually, because this is a cylinder from 5 to 8 and on the passenger side is from 1 to 4. This, this is the hole and yeah, like that. So this is how far we are off, as we can see the pin. So yeah, for sure this is going to trigger the camshaft sensor code. Other interesting stuff is that the owner was thinking that they have replaced all the chains, but they have replaced only the main chain, the longer one, and the both small chains with the tensioners are not replaced, as on the both sides we can see. This is the old chains, which, yeah, they are much more shorter and have a little bit more longer lifespan, but he told me that he wants to replace them now. So I'm going to replace the chains which are from behind, behind this chain. I'm going to try to do it like that, so without removing this cover here. Uh, because uh, initially the idea was just to retime the engine, but now it's getting a little bit more involved. So I'm going to need to remove the four gears on the camshafts. This is going to give me access to replace the chain switcher for the camshafts. And after that we're going to redo the timing. And the other thing that I don't like, this engine that the previous colleagues of mine, let's call them, have worked on it, is that they have put so much silicone everywhere on the surfaces for the valve covers, for the timing chain covers. They even put the silicone on the hoses here, as you can see. They have put silicone everywhere. Doesn't matter the hoses were brand new. They decided to put silicone, let me show you, even here. 
So yeah, this is going to seal up. It's not going to leak up for sure, but when you need to redo this, there is some downside of doing this. When you put silicone everywhere, you are not going to have leaks, okay, but uh, on the second time you need to remove it, you're going to have a really hard time removing all this silicone without this silicone getting inside the engine. And yeah, probably you're going to have some issues resealing this o-ring once again because of the silicone which is everywhere and it's really hard to clean up these plastic hoses from it. So yeah, this is why we are putting silicone only on the edges. Because when you need to remove it once again, you are not going to make so much mess inside the engine. I'm going to do my best to clean it without all the debris getting inside the engine. But for sure, some of them are going to get inside, no matter what I'm doing. So don't do repairs like this, guys. Put silicone only where it's supposed to be. Okay, so a little bit of update. I have replaced the boat tensioners on the boat sides plus the chains between the camshafts. As you can see here also, and pretty much I have retimed the engine right now. The blocks are installed. They, they are flat on the cylinder heads from each side. I must get it's important to see the labels on the camshafts I like that. So be sure that they are positioned right. Here is the other one. It's kind of hard to focus. So yeah, you need to check that the boat bounces on the intake side. Have been rotated to the left side until you're going to hear a beep. So I have connected to this pin here and to engine block ground. And yeah, this is uh, I have done this on the both sides. And I have torqued down all the boats. So the outside boat for here it should be torqued to 125 newton meters. This one for the intake camshaft is 110 and the nut for the reluctor wheel of the camshaft sensor is 40 Nm and all of these are with reverse thread. So yeah, just to show you that this goes in as it's supposed to be exactly in the hole and here also. As you can see from behind. So this is the correct way to time it. I have installed this mechanical tensioners to imitate the presence of the hydraulic tensioner. So that's why I have installed it here. But I have more detailed videos about this. Uh, so I'm just going to rotate the engine two times to see is everything aligning as it's supposed to be. And pretty much after that I'm going to install all the covers with new gaskets and not so much silicone for sure. Yeah, but before that I'm going to need to do some additional job to the car, like changing the hydraulic fluid tank, which is underneath here. Uh, and yeah, this is for the, this have been broke down. This is for the brake booster. So I'm going to replace this also. And some additional job for the oil separation system. Okay, so pretty much I have assembled pretty much everything which comes for starting up the engine. Yeah, I have assembled the coach fan which is here and the decorational covers of course but i want to first hear how it sounds and i want to have access here to see for any leakage and yeah i have changed this for the brake booster this u type of connection here also the all separation gases system which is behind here uh, let me show you so yeah this thing here so I have replaced it with brand new one. It's a terrible job while the engine is inside the car, but it's possible to do it. I have changed this hose because it was pretty bad. This is how it looked like previously. And yeah, we have replaced this U-type of connection because it was disintegrated, like you can see here. This is happening also on the six cylinder engines. And yeah, pretty much now I'm going to attempt to start it up and we're going to see how it sounds. <laughs> noises from the chain until the tensioner here filled with oil but this is normal right now the engine runs smooth in my opinion let me show you inside 
are not going to run the engine for a long time because we don't have any coolant in the system. So just to show you that we don't have for now check engine light. Of course I'm going to hook up the diagnostic tool and show you what is happening. But for now it seems promising. Let me for a top once. Oops, uh, yeah, I activated the cruise control. Let me turn it off. For now it seems smooth, runs as it's supposed to run. So yeah, actually even the first start the car didn't shake or anything like that, which is promising of course. Most of the time you're going to have some misfires in the first start. Here I guess everything is fine and we don't have any parasitic air on the intake side. So yeah, everything seems fine. And now I'm going to reassemble everything back together. And yeah, I'm going to quickly check for any leakage. And after that, yeah, I'm going to put the coach van and everything and I'm going to hook up the diagnostic tool and going to show you what is happening in the ECU. Okay, so after assembling everything and changing the oil, the owner have done around 180 kilometers. And let me show you what we have in the ECM. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry that I didn't record previously the fault code about the camshaft sensor, but we saw it on the oscilloscope that we had some issue. It was triggering the camshaft code all the time, so now I'm going to show you what codes we have inside the ECM. Yeah, these E38s are getting um, connected with the diagnostic tool kind of slowly, so it's going to take some time. Okay, so I have talked to the owner about what is his review after the repair, let's say, changing the chains on between the camshafts and retiming the whole engine. He told me that after he drove it for around 200 kilometers, he has seen substantial difference in fuel consumption and he is feeling some difference in the power, positive-wise. And yeah, we have connected to the ECM, so let's, let me show you the fault codes. We should have one fault code, which is this activation map cooling, because the owner have removed the heating element on the thermostat housing. Uh, yeah, right now I cannot show you. Uh, he have disconnected the heater on the thermostat housing because he have installed a thermostat from E38 740 diesel, which, as I saw on my diagnostic tool, is opening roughly at around 92 degrees, somewhere around that. I know on the thermostat is stating that it's 88 degrees, but. I saw uh, on the diagnostic tool that is around 92, which is much better than the OEM thermostat, which is at higher than 100 degrees, which is killing all the gaskets on this engine. So yeah, pretty much this is it after the retiming of the engine. Now we don't have any more this check engine light. Just to show the mileage. This is the mileage on the car and uh, yeah, this is miles, not kilometers, which means the car is at around... At around 334 kilometers and still in really good condition. 